Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel to please do so by clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe. Today I'm going to be continuing the augmented reality videos. I walk you through creating an asset, importing an asset, and then importing that asset into what I call a Unity AR procedural generation project. So in this project, we're going to be continuing that and I'm going to be working on placing these objects and also adding parameters so that you can actually change the height and width of the procedural generation building. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so I want to show you the scene, how it looks after we build it. So I told you we we're going to be using the placement implementation to place the procedural structure. So this is what we're doing. I'm now showing the parameters. And this is basically an early version. We're going to be able to change a lot more parameters. For now, I'm just allowing the user to specify the height and the width. But there's a lot more parameters that I didn't expose on the UI. But this is a really good, you know, a really good start. So you can kind of see I can get in, get close, and then change the height again. So now what I'm going to do is I want to show you in Unity everything that I everything that I added and change. So one of the first things that I added was I needed to add an AR Play Manager, which is what I added to the AR Session Origin. And also, I just want to remind you that I'm going to be putting this in GitHub. So when I'm done with this video, I'm going to be checking it in. And the URL should be in either Patreon or in the description of this video. So like I was saying on the AR Session Origin, I added an AR Play Manager. And then I also added an AR Raycast Manager because we need to Raycast against the plane. That's how we detect if we are, if we basically got a plane, a vertical plane or a horizontal plane detected in augmented reality. And then I also added a place on object on plane, which is basically what sets the location of the grid. And these grid with parameters, if you haven't watched the video about procedural generation, I recommend that you do and I go through various videos from you know from creating a mesh all the way through creating a grid that is randomized so this is basically that implementation and what i did in this video is basically incorporate it and also add the augmented reality components so that we can place it in ar so those are the three components that i added there are no other changes on the other components that i have from the previous videos except on the canvas i also have a params binding and that is the component that you'll see that, you know, like I show you on the beginning of this video, is that you have a params area. And that area is the components that I'm going to allow the user to input. So if I want somebody to change the width of the height of, of the grid, or if I want to add more parameters, this is where I would be putting them. So for now, I'm just, I just have the two parameters. I'm going to be adding a lot more. And my goal is to basically expose everything that I have in the procedural parameters as options for, you know, for the person who is running the experience to change, because I think it's going to be really fun to be able to see this and also, you know, change the scale. Maybe you go to a football field and you want to generate, you know, huge procedural buildings and, you know, it will be fun to, to experiment with that and see how that can af affect the experience. So the canvas basically has the stats, which is what you see on the very top. I wanted to keep that because I wanted to know how fast this is running on my device. I also have a browse button, which is basically the toggle. So whenever I press it, so if I'm not showing anything, that means that I'm, I'm, I'm able to turn it on. And then if I turn it off, then this is going to change to on. So it's basically a toggle. The toggle control, co controls the prams area. And then the pram, prams binding is basically what I'm using to you know, to change the value and get the value from the slider, get the value from either from the width and the height, and also be able to track, you know, when somebody actually press this, what happened with this panel. So that's what I'm using the brands binding for. I'll show you the code as well so that you know, you know what I'm doing. So as far as like the, if we go back to the AR session origin, the other thing that I added is I also needed to identify the basically the floor and and create planes on the floor so if you look at this check as this checker plane and once you download the code you'll see all the different components that i have on that checker plane and to be honest this is basically 
a lot of it came from the AR, the AR components that Unity offer. So they go through and create a, they created a project and they have multiple examples. So this is one of the examples that they had. I basically just look at the structure and I noticed that they had an AR plane, they had a, a visualizer. So a lot of these things are already set. So I wouldn't really worry too much about, you know, knowing exactly what each of these is doing, just getting a high level overview and know that this is basically to create the planes that, you know, are gonna allow you to play structures in a reality. So that's what I did. I added that. And then if we go back to the, if we go back to our hierarchy and you look at the AR session, you can see that I have that as a plane prefab. And that's what the AR plane manager takes. That's one of the input values. So you know that you need to, you need to create a prefab and then basically have those other components that I just show you. So just download the code and take a look at that in more detail. Then the other one that I that I created from scratch was this place object on plane. So let's go ahead and look at that and see how that works. So I'm just gonna click on open C sharp project and I'm gonna look at a couple of things because I had to make a few changes on on some of the other scripts to be able to make this work. So the one of the requirements is that we need to get the ray raycast manager. This is not a regular raycast, this is an augmented reality uh, raycast. So the component that is going to be required is the AR Raycast Manager, which com comes from the Unity Unity engine, the XR namespaces. So make sure that you, you know, you require this because I'm using Raycast in this class. So if you don't have it and you happen to try to handle a Raycast, it's not going to work the way that you think it's going to work. So just make sure that you require that as a component. The other thing that I that I also require in here is the Prance bindings. So if we go and look at that Prance binding class, this is basically a class that exposes all the stuff that I'm accept, accepting from the user. And then basically anything that the user enters or change. So for instance, the slider changes or the height slider changes, the toggle, all of that basically triggers the generation to occur again. So you can see that if I'm changing the width, the basically the value on the width slider, I am I'm also logging because I needed to I needed to track, you know, determine if this was getting executed or not. But I just removed that. But what I'm doing is I'm basically, you know, changing the parameters on the grid, getting the new value and then regenerating the regenerating the grid. I'm doing the same thing for the width and the height. And then this toggle is basically just, you know, just doing a, a knot on the whether this is active or not and then toggling the panel the toggle params area. So this is a lot of this is basically UI and then the values that I get from the UI, I pass into the grid with params class, which is the one that re is responsible for generating the grid. And it's basically the procedural generation implementation that I created. So that's what this params binding is for. And the next thing that I have is I needed to, to determine what object I'm going to be placing. Of course, in this case, the, the one that I'm placing, if I go back to the hierarchy, it's going to be the grid where params. That's the one that, that's the object that gets regenerated whenever the user changes the, the values. So this is the one that if I change the grid from, you know, from two to four, or if I change anything here, it's going to get regenerated. So the, I wanted to basically control the location of that. So that's why I'm exposing this variable. So if you go back to, if we go back to that, you can see that I'm exposing that as a variable. So all I did was drag and drop it in here. And then the other thing is I also wanted to control, let's say that you place an object and you wanted to execute an action. So I added an action there. If you wanted to do something else after the object was placed, maybe have an indicator, you can basically bind to that action. And, and then do something with it. So if we go back in here, the as, lo, as, soon, as soon as somebody basically places that in the grid and it is a placeable area, you can actually execute an action after that point. So that's what this one is for. In fact, I probably should make that serializable and make it a unity action. For now, we can just leave it as an action. I think it's fine. Then to be able to track the, the rate cast, you need to incorporate the AR Raycast Manager, and I basically have a private variable for that. And then I keep track of all the different hits that I that I have when I project the Raycast. 
So on the awake method, I, I set the place object equal to false because I, I don't want to show it before the user actually changes the location. Then I get an instance of the AR Raycast Manager. Then I just make sure I do some sanity check, make sure the place object was being you know referenced from the inspector. If it wasn't, then I tell the the coder, the, the designer that they need to make sure that there's a reference. Then the other thing that I do is very is fairly simple. I get the input touch count, make sure if the user is touching on the screen and the params area is now visible. Then I allow the user for placing one of the objects on in augmented reality around, you know, around the plane. So I get the touch face and then I detect it for if the begin the, the begin face executed. And then if that face is the one that is started, which is you know as soon as you touch on the screen, this is going to be executed. So we could also change this if we wanted to do it on every you know on every frame. We could do it. You can also do it. So this has different. You can do it when when somebody's moving. If we wanted to change this to be to change the location of the structure when somebody moves the the finger around the screen, we can do that. And I'm actually going to change it because when I tested it last time, I didn't like how how it works, so I'm gonna change it to move. So if I'm touching around the screen, I want the location to be changed. And then I'm making sure that the touch position hits the plane. And this is what this is basically what this is saying. And if we hit one of the planes, in this case it's gonna be the vertical plane, then we get the, the hit pose and then we use the hit pose position, the hit pose rotation to change the location of the the location and the rotation of the place object. Which in, a, which in our case is going to be the grid. And then of course I set it to active so that we can see it. And then this one is the callback that I show you on the very top. If we happen to, maybe we want to do another thing after we, after we execute, we have a collision, then we basically can do it in here. For now, I think, I think we're not going to use that, but I'll leave it in there because I want to refactor it and use a Unity action instead. So that's basically what the place on object place object on plane is doing. I also show you the bindings. The other thing that I needed to do, if you notice, I have a grid with params, parameters with. If I go back to the implementation of the of the grid, you can see that this class is public now. I I wanted to convert this to a to basically a property and to be honest I, I just made this public and it's okay for the example that we're running. If you of course if you wanted to scale this you may want to look at the accessor and, and make sure that only the classes that need access to, to the parameters can access it. So in this case, I made it public, so that's why I can do in here if I go to the, let me see, if I go to my params bindings, that's where I can actually access the width on the, param on the parameters and then regenerate the, regenerate the grid. So this build grid is, the, is a public method that I expose is the same one that it getting is getting executed if you change one of the values in the inspector for the grid. So that's basically you know a summary of the things that I added and changed. If you guys have any questions, you know be sure to let me know and just keep in mind that this is going to be all checked in, into source control as, as soon as I'm done. And again, if you you know if you have any questions and also if you could support me in Patreon, that would be great because that's going to allow me to you know to keep offering you guys with free code and, and keep doing what I'm doing and also growing the community. So thank you guys, I really appreciate it. All right guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time and if you have any questions, please let me know. Also be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. Either you're starting now or you're an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.